Now, look, Judge, I'm not naive. I understand this thing can turn sour real fast. We all watched the hearings for Justice Kavanaugh. It was a freak show. It, it, it looked like the, 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 the cantina bar scene out of Star Wars. And I know, for someone unaccustomed to it, that it hurts to be called a racist. I think it's one of the worst things you can call an American. I know that it hurts to be called a white colonialist. And I know it must hurt for someone of deep Christian faith like yourself to be called a religious bigot. And to have it implied that because you are a devout Christian, that you're somehow unfit for public service. Uh, before it's over with, they may call you Rosemary's baby, for all I know. I hope not. Um, and, and I know, as we've seen this morning, I know you think it's unfair. It is unfair for my colleagues to suggest, uh, some overtly, some more indirectly, that if you're put on the United States Supreme Court, you will be on a mission from God to deny health care coverage for pre-existing con uh, conditions for every American. I, I know that seems preposterous to you, and it seems that way because it is. Um, take comfort in the fact that the American people, some of my colleagues disagree with the state. They believe in government. I believe in people. The American people are not morons. They can, they can, they can uh, see dribble, drivel when they see it. And they can appreciate it when they see it for being what it is. Now, let me, let me turn to what I hope quickly we can, we can talk about today. Americans love democracy. Um, we'll even fight for it. And we have. And that's a wonderful thing. It's an important thing in today's world as this world becomes more authoritarian. And, and our founders, but we don't, ha we don't have a pure democracy. As, as a, a, a columnist I read this morning said, we don't, when we have to decide a complex issue dealing with, with social norms or economic issues, we don't all put on a toga and go down to the forum and vote. We, we have elected representatives. Those are members of Congress, and it is our elected representatives' job to decide social and economic policy. Um, and if we don't like what they do, they're accountable. We vote them out. But in the last 50 years, certainly in the last 25, the United States Congress, either voluntarily or involuntarily, has ceded a lot of its power to the executive branch and to the federal judiciary. Um, when I say the executive branch, I'm not necessarily talking about the president. I'm talking about the administrative state. The, the bureaucracy, as some call it. It's this, it's this giant rogue beast that enjoys power now that only kings once enjoyed. Um, members of the administrative state write their own laws. They interpret their own laws. Um... They litigate their own laws in their own courts before judges that they appoint. And Congress has allowed that to happen. I, I think Congress has also abdicated a lot of power to the federal judiciary. I do. And I, I'm not saying that federal judges don't make law. Of course they make law. They make law in the context of a specific case. It's called judicial precedent. But our founders intended federal judges to exercise judicial restraint and to understand the special role, scope, and mission of the federal judiciary vis-a-vis -vis the United States Congress. I don't think our founders intended uh, uh, judges to be politicians in robes. I think our founders intended judges federal judges to tell us what the law is, not what the law ought to be. 
Um, I think our founders intended, as the Chief Justice put it, I think our founders intended federal judges to call balls and strikes. I don't think our founders intended for federal judges to be able to redraw the strike zone. Um, I don't think our founders in intended for judges to be politicians in robes. Politicians, you don't want the United States Supreme Court to turn into this. Trust me. Um, politicians get to vote their preferences under our democracy. Judges do not. Judges do not. And finally, unlike some of my colleagues, I don't think our founders intended the United States Supreme Court to become a mini-Congress. I don't think our founders intended members of the United States Supreme Court to try to rewrite our statutes or the United States Constitution every other Thursday because they, to prosecute a, a social or an economic agenda that they can't get by the voters. And that goes on in America every day. We've reached the point where one single solitary federal judge in a limited venue can enjoin a federal statute or an executive order of the President of the United States for the entire country. And our founders never intended that. I, I want to close with, 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 with two very short quotations. Uh, the first, stated much more elo eloquently than I can, is Justice Curtis in 1857. You probably read it. He was dissenting in the Dred Scott case. This is what Judge Curtis said. When a strict interpretation of the Constitution according to the fixed rules which govern the interpretation of laws is abandoned and the theoretical opinions of individuals are allowed to control its meaning, we have no longer a Constitution. We're under the government of individual men who for the time being have power to declare what their Constitution is according to their own views of what it ought to me. And finally, a more contemporary statement from a gentleman that you're very familiar with, Justice Scalia. He said it in real world terms. This is what he said. The American people love democracy and the American people are not fools. The American people know their value judgments are quite as good as those taught in any law school. May be better. Value judgments, after all, should be voted on, not dictated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.